Here we're gonna do a little review on our Willis PK40 heavy duty engine lathe. These are standard 30 horsepower machines with a standard six inch spindle bore. You can also get spindle bores of many different sizes up to and including 21 inch plus spindle bore. You have an 18 speed headstock, which you can see here consists of this dial and these high, medium and low gears right here. You have RPM ranges on this spindle bore from seven to 700. You also have a fully universal inch and metric gearbox for threading and feeding. You have up to 60 different inch threads and metric threads and a wide range of feed rates. Machines have a very heavy tail stock, as you might imagine, with multiple locks, including this lever right here, including two tied on bolts there, and also a lock for the spindle right, is right there. Also a two-speed tailstock for drilling bay holes. Machines come standard with a traveling rear splash guard. You also have a nice chip and coolant collection plate, which runs along the whole base of the machine. These are very strong machines with an overbuilt apron and carriage, a 22 inch wide bed, and also the bed and the base is one solid casting resting on the floor. After receiving the machine, one of the first things you wanna do is confirm that the voltage you're putting in the machine is the same as the stickers on the outside of the machine. You bring your three hot leads into the top of this main switch right here. After connecting the power and turning on the main switch in the back, you should see this power lamp button is on right here. You wanna make sure that all your electric emergency stop buttons are out. And then you wanna power up the machine with this power on button right here. Now one of the first things you want to do is check for proper rotation of the spindle and the machine in general. Quick check on the jog button. That's going forward, so that's good. Another quick check would be on the rapid button. Make sure you're going in the same directions. That's correct. Alright, so that tells you your machine is phased correctly. Now we'll show just a quick little threading example. Uh, we have the machine set up at 105 RPM. You can see the high, medium, low is right on the medium uh, position. So up here, medium position is gonna be running at 105 RPM. If you had it at high, you'd be running at 540 and low at 22. Now we're at 105. We got it set up for uh, 11 threads per inch, I believe which is B, D, E, five, an inch. So you get all your levers set up in the correct positions. B, D, E, inch feed rate. Have that wheel at number five, and now you're in the threading lever, and you should be good. Want to turn the spindle on. Now these machines are a little different just due to the size and the feedback that our factory's gotten over the years. These are very popular in the oil field, and there's a lot of heavy threading done there. And on these machines, we have the thread dial and the thread engage lever on the left-hand side of the apron. This way, the operator can see the lineup of the tool, lines up very nicely with the thread dial and the threading lever, versus on most lays, trying to do it from this side and then seeing where the tool is is very difficult. So this one, it's all in line. We have it set up. When you're ready, you engage this lever, and now you're threaded. Another feature that these machines have is there's an electromagnetic spindle brake. You can turn the spindle off by just hitting that button, you want to drive the spindle to a stop, hold that in, and that engages the electromagnetic brake. 
Obviously, these machines have flood coolant system, which is there, which is only working when the spindle is on. And you get an emergency stop, which is always good to press if you're not using the machine. Now, I'll show a little example of the feeding of the machine. You can see the lead screw is turning there. Also, it is noticed you have a nice stainless steel cover for the lead screw, which keeps a lot of chips and junk off the lead screw. We kept it in the same BDE5 uh, location. We're still an inch. We moved this lever here from the threading up to the feeding, and this is feeding roughly about 5 thousandths inch per revolution. We're still at 105 RPM. We come over to the apron here, and this is pretty standard location for your feed and gauge lever. Now you're in feed. And you can take it out by hitting this up. Or you also have some dogs. There are a couple of these on the bottom of the bed, which work in conjunction with this limit switch, which will also kick the machine out of power feed. A very nice feature of these machines, they do have a six-way power feed. That's the carriage, the cross slide, and the compound slide. We're still in that same power feed. You can see that's going to be running longitudinally. If you want to run the cross feed, now your cross feed is feeding. If you want to run the compound, Now you can see your compound is feeding. And in similar fashion, you have the same controls that are on the apron here, which can be very convenient for the operator. Again, the stop. And that also has the electromagnetic stop. Stops it right now. Here we show the rapid working for the entire carriage. Move this lever, now we get it for the cross slide. And move it down here for the top slide, or compound slide. As you can see, the machine comes standard with a very heavy four-way tool post. We often put uh, Alora's quick change tool post on there. We have multiple steady rests available, taper attachments, multiple three, four, six jaw chucks, uh, hydraulic copy systems, semi-automatic turning and threading cycles. Uh, as I said, larger spindle bores. Uh, this chuck guard here is standard. Um, what it does when it's open, it disables the spindle. You're still able to jog the spindle but you're not able to turn it back on until you close the chuck guard. Thanks again for your interest in the Willis PK lathes. We hope to hear from you soon.